Papineau. I'm here in New Orleans, Louisiana, at the CBTU convention, the 46th year. It is very, very interesting and knowledgeable, and I feel that we there must be someone out there that can still use the seniors. I'm retired, but I'm still at. My name is Daisy Newsom. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I'm a proud member of CBTU, attending the convention in New Orleans. I'm so proud to be with CBTU. I have attended for over five years now. It is educational and it is an organization that is well represented. And I'm just proud of everything that's going on in this convention. It's educational and very friendly with everyone. Thank you. This is Khalid Salam. I'm a delegate here at the CBTU convention in New Orleans. Uh, this morning was excellent. Uh, we had a very good discussion and presenters about electoral politics and the necessity for us to be very concise about how we use technology and mobilize getting out to vote. Uh, we had a uh, PD uh, tally, a sister who was very good in Ohio mobilizing the vote where they actually were able to uh, show some kind of competence that black folks can run campaigns and create outcomes that are in our interest. We also had uh, uh, brother Claude Cummings Jr. who talked about in Texas how they begin to mobilize and, and put together funds to be able to mobilize and get people out to vote to overturn certain city council races, things like that. So please, all of us, we need to be more active so that we can protect the rights of workers and the children who will come behind us. For without us mobilizing and protecting our rights, those rights will continue to be eroded. Signing off, now but not forever.
retiree of SEIU 721. And a lot of retirees are out here in New Orleans at the Coalition of Black Trade Unionism Convention, CBTU. Oh my goodness, I see how much I've been missing. I used to come to the CBTU convention all the time, and I got away from that. But I am so glad I signed up to come to CBTU this time. Our president had a great message. My head is gonna go down, but our president of CBTU is the Reverend Terrence L. Miller. He is the new president. Bill Lucy was here emeritus. The president, he did a speech, and his speech was not just about Trumpism. It was about us as a people us as a nation and what we need to do and how we need to get up and stand up and fight against this number 45. Yes, we call it number 45. And we he talked about President Barack Obama, that everything 40, that everything 44 brought into fruition, 40, President Barack Obama, 44. Everything that he brought into 45 is getting rid of he talked about the affordable health care, the one they call Obamacare. Now they call it Trump, Trump care. And all those people in the backwoods and the Appalachian Mountains, way in the back, that all voted for Trump. Now guess what? No more food. That's right. Meals on wheels, he chopped. Affordable health care, he chopped it. Housing under Dr. Ben Carson, chopped. Schools, chopped. Everything was chopped. The president's video should be on the website of CBT. I would advise you to get it. If you can get the entire CD, get it so that you can hear his entire speech. That man was ferocious. He was on point. He told us that CBTU is going to be standing up. CBTU is going to work with the NAACP and with APRI. We can no longer let 45 get away with what he's doing to all of us, to labor, non-labor, to the people in general. Betsy DeVos talked about him, talked about her, and everything is about charter schools. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, we have to fight, we have to fight, and we have to fight. Our forefathers, the ones whose shoulders we are standing on, we cannot let them down, we cannot let ourselves down, and we cannot let our children down, because they will be standing on our shoulders, and we need to leave them something. So congratulations to our CBTU president, Reverend Ter Terrence L. Melvin. Thank you for your speech. Thank you for talking about NAACP. Thank you for talking about APRI, that we all need to come together as one and fight 45. Thank you.
conservative right-wing administration that is making local policing a massive issue, a bigger issue than it already is. It has support. Uh, privatization of prisons, rates of recidivism, recidivism because there, there are no programs to support returning citizens to transition back into the community. Forces involved, legislators, organizations that are working on those policies to undermine and empower this movement. To undermine, we have private prisons and we have school to, pipeline, uh, school to prison pipelines and uh, blocking the restoration of rights for returning citizens. But we also have some positive stuff like Ban the Box, right? And we have some organizations that are working very hard to try to get folks their rights, their voting rights restored. We also have uh, some community and uh, unions that are participating, uh, the NAACP, uh, legislators, CBTU chapters, and CBTU National. And um, what we have is an administration under Obama that had actually pushed to stop funding with private prisons, right? But now we see a reversal of that with 45. So who we have against us are far-right organizations, big private uh, uh, prison businesses, far-right legislators, organizations such as ALEC and the NRA. They all fall under the same very right and very conservative agenda. So we're, we, we asked the question, and my brother Dorshe here stated something. Well, the founding father of this mass incarceration movement actually was Bill Clinton back in the 90s. And we don't all really see that. There's a disconnect there, right? So his mistake, the mistake that was made, right, and his mistakes that he's made, we were able to not really pay attention to that because of the mistakes he made in his life. So smoking a little weed, having an affair, made him human, made him accessible, so we overlooked those things. We overlooked his policies that were attacking our communities of color. <clears throat> so, is CBTU involved? Yes, it is. It's involved on the national level. Um, what we discussed was how the different conventions have actually had uh, educational programs regarding mass incarceration to start the conversation. And it's been involved in cases that re-examine uh, folks that are in prison. So it's bringing this conversation back up, right? We, I'm not sure what the specific cases are, but that was a conversation that was brought up. So they also talk about how labor plays a role in curbing recidivism rates through union jobs, right? You have a good union job, you have some stability, you have some health care, you're given an opportunity through Ban the Box to actually be employed, and you're able to have a more stable life when you are back in the community. So the role, the role of CBTU is a national education campaign with local chapters that may be supporting legislation such as Ban the Box. The values that we bring to the table at CBTU is our voice that can ripple an effect which can then impact, raise awareness, and prompt others to actually join the, the, the movement and become involved with what we're trying to do. So we're not sure how else CBTU is involved, but that, those are the things that we actually know is happening. So, so um, if we weren't involved, if CBTU wasn't involved, there would be a void, as CBTU attracts a number of people and organizations, right? And to not be involved would be a discredit to this organization and its members. The challenges that we're facing are very conservative policies that prevent us from actually moving forward. And I think that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. Conservative policies where? Conservative policies through the administration and local uh, legislation. Okay. So for example, like Virginia. Virginia uh, was trying to get past uh, 
the, uh, trying to pass the ability for folks who are returning citizens to actually have their uh, voting rights restored. Uh, so that it's not a case by case cases, right? If you did your time and you coming back into the community, why aren't your rights to vote automatically restored? This is just a real quick thing. Gallup poll, and this is a good thing, that every year they ask people in one of their polls, when you retire, how much do you think Social Security is going to be in your retirement income? Is it going to be a majority, a little bit, or not very much? How important is it going to be to you? The most important line there is the one in the middle. It's a light blue line. And that there, people are saying it's going to be a majority important part of their retirement income. And it's now at its highest level ever, uh, as you can see. The top line is, it's going to be part of my income is coming down. And of course, not much of my income is going down as well. So it tells us that people are paying more attention to Social Security. They know it's going to be a more important part of the retirement because we don't have the pensions and we don't have the savings because wages have been flat over the last 25 or 30 years. So it gives us the opportunity to, do, to advocate for a better Social Security and expanded Social Security program. Like Medicare, we have some folks who don't think like us. Uh, there's a congressman from Texas, sorry Linda, named Kevin Brady, who is chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, took over Paul Ryan's slot, and he has a bill. First, he raised the age to 70 for your full benefits. So we have Ryan saying, let's raise Medicare to 67, and Brady saying Social Security to 70. Whatever happened to looking out for working people in this country uh, as well? Then they'd means test it. They'd look at your other income and say, if you're making too much money on your other sources, we're going to cut your benefits. Well, remember, these, they do it now for Medicare. But on Social Security, this is our money. You know, it's like an insurance policy. If you buy $100,000 worth of life insurance, if you make $50,000 a year or a million dollars a year, you pay the same premium for the same benefit. That's the same concept of insurance and Social Security. They want to change that. Uh, and then, of course, they want to put in the lower CPI formula as well. So that's issues that we in the Alliance, beyond budget on the legislation, we're going to have to look out for uh, this year as well. But to summarize, if the retirement crisis, we have fewer pensions, the Great Recession, a lot of people lost home equity and a lot of parts of the country haven't brought that equity back. The 401k promise has not been fulfilled. Real wages lower, <clears throat> lost jobs, and of course, uh, lingering effects of the recession as well. So, what we're doing is we've got to be active. Uh, the Pew people did a poll saying most Americans don't know these Medicare changes that are being proposed as well. And when they learn about them, they get really angry. So we know if we educate, we can turn people to see how wrong some of these ideas are. What we did over the winter, and it kind of surprised us because in a large part of the country over the holidays in the winter, retirees are busy with families or the weather's not good, but we had an outburst after the election of activism uh, this year as well, both online, sending you um, a letter saying send this to your congressman or senator or show up at his or her office uh, this year. We did over 120 office meetings in the winter did 20,000 phone calls, uh, did some marches, got on television as well. So it's telling us there's a real heartbeat out there to take action against some of these things. Uh, we have signs that we take to the offices where I worked, and you fill in the number of years, 49 years for my Medicare, keep your hands off of it, basically, uh, as well. And protests around, oh, there's one in San Antonio, I wonder who was there, uh, for example. 
Hartford, Connecticut, Columbus, uh, all around the country on uh, hands-off Social Security and Medicare. Elected officials, too, want to hear stories. They want to hear, they don't want to see numbers on a sheet, what these policies, what these programs do to real people. So we're collecting stories. We have a lot of our members go when we get a call from Capitol Hill or in the state capitol saying, give us a senior who can tell us a story about Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid, for example. It's on our website. So please, if you have ideas or stories, let us know. Uh, we will use them. So in the end, how, I'm sorry, I had to put up his name. How do we resist uh, these people? Educate, organize, do what we've done all our working lives, mobilize. And most important, uh, especially coming up this year and next year, is voter protection. We have to be on top of a lot of these laws on voter protection because seniors in a lot of states are doubly affected because if you don't have a driver's license and you need some sort of government ID, then you'd be paying a lot of money or taking, I know in Philadelphia, two or three buses to get to the DMV office that the Republican governor moved, uh, for example, or if you're a woman and your name changed because of marriage, trying to get old birth certificates and the like there, barriers have been put up to make people not vote. And those are the walls that we have to work on and, and bring down as well. Uh, we've had a couple of good court decisions here and there, but reversing those laws, overturning them, is the best way to fight. So we're the only country in the world where one political party has a policy of suppressing the vote, the only democracy in the world where that is their policy, for example. So, uh, again, take action, spread the word. It starts in your homes, in your communities. Find out your local alliance. We're working uh, uh, every day, someplace doing something or the other in the state capital, local community or in the state, or Washington as well. You know, use the Facebook, use our um, fact sheets as well. But the one thing we can't do, as we've heard today from everyone, is nothing. Because if we don't do nothing, then these crazy ideas that we thought of a couple of years ago on Social Security and Medicaid and Medicare are one step closer to becoming law. And what we worked for in our working lives all those years for ourselves and the generations after us is in deep, deep danger. So again, I want to thank Carolyn for inviting us again. Uh, look forward to seeing you the rest of the afternoon, and uh, God bless. Thanks.